right, guys, this is going to be a long, rambling video where I attempt to explain politics as they are today in the United States versus how they should be. To somebody who sent me a message, a viewer request, and said, look, I'm from Europe and I love your videos, but half the stuff you talk about in your political stuff, I don't understand. Could you explain it to me? And that's what I'm going to attempt to do here. Now, keep in mind, I am not a political science major. So if you are, keep in mind that I am trying to explain this in simple layman's terms to somebody who does not understand at all. So please don't get your panties in a bunch. If I say something that's a little off here or there, I don't say it the way you would want it said. Um, now, if I straight up say something that's completely wrong, then by all means, correct me on that. But other than that, let's try and keep our panties firmly unbunched, all right? So first up, this is the political spectrum in our country today. Now, this is not how it should be because this is kind of the box we've been forced into by the two-party system in that, um, you know, we have these two major political parties and neither party lines up 100% with everybody's beliefs, but we have to choose one, all right? And that's where these two parties come in, Democrat, Republican, the RNC, the DNC. Keep in mind, these are private organizations. These are not government entities, all right? These are private organizations that want power. So they go out there and try to get votes from people so they can get into power to control things, right? And they say, we believe in this, 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 and this. Come vote for us. So most of us, while we don't believe in this, 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 and this, maybe we just believe in this, this, and this, and we disagree with the other things, but we go, hey, that side, the Republicans, or that side, the Democrats, fall in line more with what I'm thinking than the other side does, so I'm going to vote for them. So years and years and decades and decades of doing that has led to this political spectrum, where you basically have these four points on the map, right? Now, it used to be there was right versus left, less government versus more government, conservative versus liberal. We are now taking Democrat and Republican off the table, right? That is no longer the case. Now conservatives and liberals are defined by social and economic um, beliefs uh, as opposed to less government versus more government. Now there is still a little bit more government in the liberal ideology than there is in conservative ideology, but keep in mind there are plenty of big government conservatives and there are plenty of small government liberals, okay? Um, the conservatives are defined by their beliefs, which are many things the liberals don't, uh, don't agree with, which would be things like being pro-gun, being uh, for securing the borders, lower taxes, free market uh, capitalism, free trade, um, anti-abortion, pro-religious freedom, right? And liberals define themselves by things like being pro-abortion, legalized marijuana, gay marriage, um, uh, more restriction on big business, higher taxes, open borders, things like that that conservatives wouldn't agree on. It's not so much defined right to left by how much government control you want in your life. Now, that is determined by up and down. You have progressives who very much agree with the elite, or in this case, the, the, the government, stepping in to tell you what to do and control as much of your lives as they possibly can because, well, they as the elite, they know better than you. So they treat us like the stepchild, they pat us on the head, send us on our way, and control every aspect of our lives. That is progressivism in a nutshell, more or less, okay? They are all about more government control, more control by the elites, by the higher-ups, um, less about the individual, it's all about them controlling the individual for their own means, their own purposes. Now, that is not exclusive to liberalism. A lot of you guys out there will say, well, that's, that's liberals. Well, a lot of liberals are progressives, but there are also a lot of conservatives who are progressives. Look at people like John McCain. Uh, look at who started the modern progressive party. That was Teddy Roosevelt. He was a big government progressive. Sure, he was pro-gun and he was Republican when it came to things like taxes, when it came to the economy, but he was also the kind of guy that wanted the government, wanted the elites, wanted the people who knew better than you to control everything. That was him, okay? So even though he was, he was doing it for the good of you guys there on the right, for you Republicans, he was still a big government progressive. Libertarians, on the other hand, they believe in as little government as possible without slipping into anarchy. Basically, the government steps in to do just a few things. Things like secure our, our borders, things to pro like provide for the national uh, defense against you know, all enemies, foreign and domestic, right? Um, and do things like protect individual liberties and freedoms. So occasionally, um, if somebody's rights or liberties or freedoms are under attack, the government will step in and do something about it. Whether that's an attack from another individual or some other organization or entity or whatever it is, they step in, they ensure that person's freedom, and then they step out again. So as little government as possible, that is what libertarians are all about. So now the spectrum of more government to less government is up and down, not left and right. Okay, that is, in a nutshell, politics in this country as it stands right now. Now let's look at 
what politics could be, maybe should be, in this country if we were more politically honest about what we really believe. All right, so here is a more accurate representation of what political ideologies would be in this country if we were not forced into a two-party system. This is your scale of government control, left versus right, more government versus less government. Now, I don't want to have the debate of whether the two-party system is better or multiple-party system is better. They both have their merits. They both have their pros and cons. And also because inevitably the conversation I always find myself in is that we are a two-party system and that's been good for us. Well, we're not a two-party system as a matter of fact. We are in fact a multiple party system. It's just that for decades and decades and well over a hundred years, these two private organizations, the DNC and the RNC, have spent every waking moment indoctrinating you and your grandparents and your parents and your children to believe they are the only two viable options. You have been indoctrinated to believe that. That is why you think we live in a two-party system when we in fact do not. There are multiple parties out there. There are Libertarians, Green Party, Communist Party, Constitution Party, all kinds of parties out there that uh, could very well be in power if people just voted for them. It's, it's pretty simple. So let's not have that discussion. But let's talk about this scale here. More control versus less control. All right. So we have communism, socialism, progressivism, liberalism, moderates conservatives, libertarians, and anarchists. Now, obviously, if this was the way our political system worked, there would be little subsections of, of progressives that would pop up and subsections of conservatives that would pop up. And you'd have more parties in this. You'd have people that believed in, in more than just touting the conservative line or the libertarian line or the liberal line or the socialist line or whatever. There would be little subsections of each group. That's fine. That happens. And obviously, when you're talking about just government control, it looks pretty simple. But once you get into social issues and, and uh, you know economic issues and, and foreign affairs and that kind of thing, obviously, some people may go, well, maybe I'm not really conservative. Maybe I'm more libertarian or maybe I'm not moderate. Maybe I'm more liberal, you know, and things like that. And so there is obviously this sliding scale based on what your beliefs are on every single little issue, not just how much government control you want, right? So there, there's there's a lot to this. It's a very complex issue. But one thing you will notice is nationalism, populism, fascism, authoritarianism. These things are not on this sliding scale of government control, and that's for one simple reason, because those things are not restricted to any one side of the left versus right, more control versus less control political spectrum. Okay, You can be a nationalist, a populist, a fascist, authoritarian, and you can be right or you can be left. Now, fascism, okay, that's the one that pops up all the time. That's the one you hear people talk about all the time. Fascists are right-leaning conservatives, and that is just historically not true at all. The vast majority of fascists have been left-leaning. Let's talk about Hitler. Everybody loves to say he's a right-leaning fascist. He was not. The Nazis were the National Socialist Party of Germany. That's what they were. That's historic fact. You can look it up. Hitler was a socialist. And he was also a fascist. So that right there tells you that fascists can be anywhere on the political spectrum. In fact, authoritarians and fascists in general always tend to lean more left because it requires more government control to have those things become a thing in a country, in a political system. You have to have more government control to be an authoritarian or to be fascist. So generally speaking, those are going to be more left-leaning. Populism, nationalism, that's anywhere on the political spectrum. You don't need more or less government control to be a populist or a nationalist, okay? So that is kind of the ideology behind where the true political spectrum would be in this country if we had not been indoctrinated into a two-party system. So. That is pretty much it. Um, hopefully that explained everything. Again, I know this was a long rambling video. A lot of you guys probably don't care about this. That's fine. But for those few of you that do, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your questions and comments and that kind of stuff down below. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching.